fluids move in the body based on pressure. Right. Okay. They, they function from high, high pressure to low pressure, which means that fluids always go from a high pressure towards a low pressure naturally. So think about uh, water behind a dam that's holding it up. If you open up the dam of the, the d- door and then the water naturally goes from the high side to the lower side. Yeah. Okay? The lowest pressure for the veins and the body and the lowest pressure for the lymph in the body is at the collarbone. So everything wants to drain, wants to, that's the point, to the collarbone. Where is it drained from? Well, everywhere else. So then you say, if that's where the lowest pressure is, where would the highest pressure be in the body? At the furthest distance away from the collarbone. So the furthest distance away from the collarbone above the collarbone is your brain. Mm -hmm. So your brain wants to drain to the collarbone. Your fingers want to drain to the collarbone. Your feet want to drain to the collarbone. But guess what? They can't get there until they pass the big six first. Right. They have to pass the clusters. And many people have blocked clusters in all six. So why I'm telling you this is that when you release lymphatics, you never, ever, ever, ever start from the hands and the feet and work your way in. You start from the collarbone and you work your way out because you have to reduce flow from low to high, not high to low. Because what happens is you're going to be sending something from one block into another block that's further down the chain because you went the wrong way. Dr. Perry, he will teach you everything you know. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> well, you know, we love lymph like a lot. <laughs> yeah. And you said we got 45 minutes for the show. I'm like, you got 45 hours? Because <laughs> I, I could just keep going and going. Here's my running joke, man. Hopefully people remember the movie Jerry Maguire with yeah. uh, Tom Cruise. When she when he walks in and he starts to talk and she goes, shut up, shut up. You, you had me at hello. Uh-huh. My joke is you have me at lymph. You say that, <laughs> I'm in, man. We're good to go. We and Vegas friends. too. That's a that's a double check the win box moment for us. Well, it's going to be for the listeners too because I know that they have a lot of questions. I mean, but actually, before we get started, for those who don't know who you are, why don't you give a quick little background on who you are, how you got into this, what you stand for, and then we'll jump into the questions. Sure. Well, uh, Perry Nicholson's my name. I'm the owner of my brand and company called Stop Chasing Pain. And that kind of says it all of what our message is, is to treat pain. Of course, Uh, we usually tell you to start where it hurts and then look everywhere else. So, um, but people end up chasing it, you know, this spot, that spot, and then they get stuck in the quicksand and they just don't understand why they can't get out. I mean, your listeners are, are probably very familiar with that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's all about uh, teaching people some self-care techniques to take care of themselves. And my journey into this honestly began like probably most of your listeners where I hit a rock bottom. I was yeah. suffering and had pain and I couldn't get better even from my own techniques and that I was doing and my own thought processes that I was doing and people that I was seeing. And I said, you know what? I am missing something big here <laughs> because what I'm doing is not working. And then that's what, where I kind of came across the lymphatic system at that standpoint. And then I just never looked back to, back from that point. Cause I was like, Oh, where's this thing? Where's the system been all my life? Oh, it's been there. I just wasn't aware of it. That's all. <laughs> right. Oh, right. So well, actually it's the, it's like the forgotten system, isn't it? Right. We don't talk about that. We talk about cardiovascular. We talk about endocrine. Yeah. Nervous. Well, I mean, it's kind of like, I call it the, like the new fascia in a way, because there was a time when nobody really said anything about fascia, just mm. cut through it, overlooked it. No big deal. But now we know that it's sort of maybe kind of a little important in relationship to everything. Yeah. And the, lymphatics are the same way i think people are going to be talking about it. so you see more about it now than you than i've ever seen which is really nice to see and i think one of the biggest reasons is that when people start working it they go i don't know if this is all in my head but this is crazy i feel so much better what why have hasn't somebody told me about this stuff before and then they share that with other people and it just kind of catches like wildfire 
that's the truth. Actually, before we describe the lymphatic system, I want you to go over common maladies, signs, symptoms that can be associated with the lymphic, lymph, uh, lymphatic system. So people listening can go, that's me. I need to work on this system. So what do you yeah. see? I'm going to be honest with you and tell you, it could be just about anything you want to name off a list. Mm. And I'll explain why that is in a moment when you see how absolutely critical and important it is for the function of every other system. Mm -hmm. But one of the biggest things that you'll get is brain fog. You'll get neuroinflammation. That's a big one. Uh, puffiness, swelling, um, edema and in the body, body parts, things like that. Uh, also, people that struggle to lose body fat when they try a lot of different things. That's a big culprit as well because of the underlying inflammation in the body. Uh, some people get a lot of mucus symptoms, you know, leaky eyes, leaky nose, you know, phlegm, sinus infections and stuff like that. I mean, if you've got a symptom, you can most likely link it to the lymphatic system playing some kind of pivotal role in it. So we always assess the system and check off the box to see how much of a part it's playing sometimes a small part sometimes a ginormous part but in my viewpoint the lymphatic system is going to play a role in everything and then all right now we can go with the basics what is the lymphatic system and then we'll get into you know what does it do and then how can we assess it yeah great question well people always ask me you know what's what can you do about the lymphatic system i said well first of all just the awareness that you have one is the first step towards changing it right but it's, it's part of two systems, primarily, your immune system. It's a huge component of your immune system. So it's your immune system job is to kill things that are trying to kill you and keep you living longer. So that's kind of a big deal, right? And um, it gets rid of the waste products in your body. It's like a sewage system, basically. Like flushing your toilet in your house is what your lymph nodes basically do. And so anything that enters the body that the body breaks down has to get out. The lymphatic system does that. And plus just your own cells dying every day because you're making new, stronger ones. The old ones got to go somewhere. Well, that's the primary route that they're going to go. Uh, so, um, and it's, it's also true that your immune system primarily lives in your gut. And that's where most of your lymphatic system lives too. So it's kind of nice how that works out, right? But maybe they designed it that way for a reason, right? <laughs> Convenient. <laughs> that that the, the lymphatic system lives in the in the gut. So we always tell people, if you have a gut problem, you have a lymph problem. You have a lymph problem, you have a gut problem. You always go together. And in my viewpoint, there's zero discussion on that. And then it's also part of your vascular system, your circulatory system, which is a, a one that's really missed a lot because the lymphatic system will dump its end product, which is called plasma, into the cardiovascular system at the veins, mm -hmm. at, the, at the collarbone to go back into the heart. So it dumps directly into your venous system. And the, the lymphatic system was actually derived from the venous system embryologically. So they spurn off of each other. So what will happen is that if you have some lymphatic system issues, you can have some circulation issues in, anywhere in the body. And if you have some circulation issues, you'll have some lymphatic issues. So it relates a lot, not if not just if you have you know pain or swelling or inflammation or symptoms, but sports performance. I mean, mm. that's all about cardiovascular blood flow, right? Yeah. So it's huge to keep that system working well, even when you're feeling like you're like you're well and you're what i call a hashtag beast mode monster you stay that way by working your lymphatic system right? or even knowing that you should be assessing it that makes sense right. it I, well i was going to say i think a lot of people don't realize they know about the lymphatic system they may have heard of lymph nodes which you mentioned earlier right everyone knows about the lymph nodes in their neck maybe the lymph nodes in their armpit yeah. but um, beyond that, we don't get taught ever much about. Well, here's the thing. The lymph system, you know, lymph most nodes. people are only told they have a lymphatic system problem if they're abnormally puffy and swollen, or you yeah. have what's called lymphedema. 
lymphedema it can be caused by many different reasons, but you can say, wow, this body part's a lot more swollen than another one. That usually can tip you off that you have it. So then you obviously look at your lymphatic system. And then you also look at your lymphatic system in relationship to cancer because they can see that it can it can spread through the lymphatic system. But the lymphatic system also kills cancer cells every day. So you don't get it. Right. So, you know, you have to say, well, which came first, the chicken or the egg? It's probably both. Yes. Right. Um, so it plays a role once again in your immune system. But that tells you the power of how it goes everywhere if you yeah. can transport anything that way. So yeah. that's a huge deal. But you also have what they call uh, subclinical lymphatic issues, which means that nobody's looking at the lymph system as being a causative factors for your presentation of your diagnosis or your disease or your symptoms, because something isn't abnormally swollen or you don't have cancer. You follow? Yep. So they're seeing obesity is really linked to a poorly functioning lymphatic system. And lymphatic system can also poorly functional lymphatic system can lead to obesity at the same time it's it's locked into uh glaucoma as well oh, yeah. uh crohn's disease irritable bowel disease or some of the ones that are at the top of the list that you need to look at when you have a lymphatic system issue and i think that list is going to continue to grow now that they're looking at lymphatic systems more but in particularly the uh neuroinflammation the, the stuff in the brain there Huge. Yeah. That's Huge. kind of where everybody's focusing now when they can see the relationship of the, the peripheral lymphatic system in your body in relationship to how well the brain works, because here's a novel idea. They always work together. <laughs> you can't separate. They're connected. Them. Yeah, absolutely. And it used to be a time that we didn't think that. But, you know, oopsie daisy, we were wrong yet again. Right. And that's, that's a huge component. So that's why I tied it back to some of the neuroinflammation and brain fog, because a lot of people will begin to get better in the brain when you begin to work the lymphatic system, because you're removing toxins from the body and you're improving vascular flow. And why do you have a vascular system in the first place? Well, that's blood. <laughs> and, you know, and that's the transport medium for all the stuff that everybody talks about. Yeah. Like oxygen and horm hormones got to yeah. get there somehow. Well, that's a big supply chain. Right? So if you have the hormones and you have the oxygen, I'm going to say, well, can they get to their target? Yes or no. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And if they get to their target and the target cells use it, well, that's good because they're supposed to, and they use it to help you make new cells and create energy so you can thrive and recover and regenerate and live a happier life. But every time a cell uses energy, it makes waste. Yeah. And then that waste has got to get out too. So it, it's both ways. Just right? like the trash in our house, right? We yeah. bring stuff in through, through our literal highways, roads and streets. We bring stuff into our home and then we make waste and we have to get rid of it. Otherwise, what happens to our house? Yeah, it's gross. exactly. It smells. Yeah, it's like it's like a toilet that doesn't flush. So your lymph nodes, you got about 600 or 700. And some people say 400 or 500. And the numbers are arbitrary. Honestly, you got more than one. That's the point. <laughs> so if they get clogged up, well, then it's like your clogged toilet in your house. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to get backed up in there. I don't want to be anywhere near your house. And the same thing is when your cells get backed up, they have to live in their own poop. And doesn't that make, doesn't, doesn't make them happy. Well. No, no. Yeah. So I usually, I learned something a long time ago when I was trying to be a better teacher, a better communicator, because doctor means teacher. <laughs> and I learned that if you tie a, a new concept that you're trying to teach someone, tie it to something that they're already familiar with so they'll get it. Because mm -hmm. if I start talking lymph and I'm talking nodes and, you know, afferent and efferent, the lights turn out, Right. So I always say, one, you can think about it like the sewage system in your house that you got to flush the toilet. If the, if the toilet gets backed up, you have to unclog the toilet, right? You have to manually get in there and remove the blockage. Well, that's yeah. what you have to do with the lymphatics as well when they have some obstruction or stagnation to them. And people ask me, how does that happen? Well, welcome to this thing called LIFE. It's called life. <laughs> that happens right? Stress is a big cause of that. Sympathetic dominance where you're in fight or flight tightens up tissue and tissue, tight tissue doesn't transport fluids well, blood flow and lymph flow. But I found the fish tank analogy worked the best. Yeah. 
Okay. Because uh, if you think about the human body, it, it's mostly water. It, it's called interstitial fluid. That's the, the fluid that lives between the cells. And interstitial fluid is actually called pre-lymph, pre-lymph fluid because it turns into lymph and then once it's in lymph then it goes into the bloodstream then it changes the name but it's still the same stuff right it just changes the name so it's arbitrary but it's the same stuff right so um the cells would be like fish living in your fish tank right and they need they need to breathe they need oxygen and they need nutrients and they need the water around that cell to stay viable so the fish don't die so if you have a fish tank that has a proper filter system that you usually can't see because it's underneath the fish tank, hidden by the cabinet doors, right? So nobody ever looks there. If the filter system works, you see the little bubbles in the corner and oxygen's going through and all the fish are going around like that and everybody's happy and you feed the fish, the fish eat the food and the fish poop and then the filter clears it out. Perfect. But what happens if the filter system begins to become dysfunctional? Well, the fish don't die right away. You usually see it change over a period of time where that fish tank looks a little murky. It's like turning green and I can't see through it. And there's algae and fungus and all sorts of bacteria and parasites and fungus and you name it growing on the fish and growing on the rocks and on the tank like biofilm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what happens inside of you. And then you have low oxygen in the tank. And if you have low oxygen in the body, you're going to get pain somewhere. Mm -hmm. Trust me, right? That means pain somewhere. And then when you look inside the tank, if you ever seen the fish, they're like struggling to breathe. They're going, like, bah, bah, yeah, bah, because they can't get oxygen and they eventually die. Right. And well, that's what your cells are doing because they're living in their own waste. Now, imagine if you just keep throwing food in the tank. All the, all the stuff in the tank to try to fix the tank. Well, it's not going to do any good because you haven't gotten anything out. And that's what we do in healthcare. We put so much stuff in all the time, put the food in, put the supplements in, put the breathing in through the oxygen. I'm like, that's a good start, but did you clean the tank first? You got to do that first, right? Which means that you actually have to clean the tank itself, but not just that, fix the filter system underneath. Because if you don't fix the filter system and I put new fish and new water and new rocks and I clean the glass, what's going to come back in a few weeks? Same the thing. same problem, the same problem, right? And I equated that to the same physical problem that you're having, the same symptoms that you're having, the same pain that you're having, because you didn't bother cleaning out your fish tank first, right? So you, you clean that and then you put it back in and then you start to feed the fish. And then all of a sudden it, that people go, that makes so much sense. I never thought about that before, but it's the same thing with the human body. You've got to get that tank cleaned. Yeah. So I learned a long time ago that the body will not let anything in that it can't get out. Now, let me clarify that you can put stuff in all the damn day, all day long. I could put stuff in my mouth 24 seven, but that doesn't mean that it's going into your cells. Mm -hmm. Yep. Can, can you, uh, can it get to the cell? First of all, and I'm going to tell you that if your interstitial fluid is full of poop, it's not. Mm -hmm. And then if it does get in there, can it actually be absorbed into the cell? And then can the cell metabolize it? And if it does metabolize it, then it makes waste. So you're right back where you started from. So that's when I learned a long time ago that it's the order in which you do some of these things, these therapies that makes a difference on how well they work. Yeah, which makes sense, complete sense. And now that people are listening, I know they're having massive light bulb moments of, oh my God, that's me. I, first of all, I'm having all those symptoms. Second of all, I'm just taking either a bunch of medications or a bunch of supplements or both. I have a bunch of medications and a bunch of supplements and I feel no better. I feel marginally better or somewhat better, but then you know, after a couple months, I'm right back to where I started. So how do we yep. assess this? Somebody's listening and they're going, yep, that's me that I can relate a hundred percent. Is there, do we jump into, well, let's just assume it, the, the, it's a lymphatic problem and let's treat it. Or is there an at home assessment somebody can do by pushing on points in their body and figure out what's going on? Yeah. So to all of that for sure. Okay. Now I have, a, I have a running <laughs> joke, but I'm not joking. Everybody has a lymphatic system problem. They just don't know it yet. <laughs> yeah. I work it on just, my lymphatics all the time. In fact, and you I, should. I, I jumped on my mini trampoline today, do 
dry skin brushing. I'm, I save your videos to do at home. I cut my husband's always Lovely. like, what are you doing? I said, I'm working. It's on a daily that thing. System. <laughs> it's an absolute day. Why? Because you never stop getting toxins coming yeah. at you yeah. from outside and inside. It's the cost of living on this earth. Yeah, is where it's going to be. Well, right? you've heard you've heard me say before when people, you know, I always talk about hormones. So people ask me, um, well, how long should I do this? I, I need to do an estrogen detox, right? I need an estrogen cleanse. What's your favorite three day, like three day <laughs> detoxification <laughs> happens 24, 7, 365. Like it does not take off Christmas, Hanukkah, your birthday, Sunday. It doesn't care. It happens mm -hmm. every single day, which means every single day you have to be working on a little somewhat. Yeah, I agree with that. So there's actually a condition that's called interstitial inflammatory stasis. So that's the big fancy medical term. I'm going to break that down. I don't know what that one so, is. So what does stasis mean? Well, that means stagnation. That means lack of movement. That means water that doesn't move. What, what happens when you see water that doesn't move in nature? It breeds what? Disease. You don't want to go anywhere near that water because you'll die quick, fast, and in a hurry, and it won't be pleasant. Right? So stasis just means lack of movement. What does inflammation mean? Well, that's pretty straightforward, right? You got, you got inflammation in the body. And inflammation is not bad. It's, you need to have inflammation or you would die sooner. You just don't want to have it all the time. Right. <laughs> and the lymphatic system job is to get rid of inflammation. Now, what does interstitial mean? Well, we already said that's the fluid between the cells. So the fluid between your cells becomes stasis, doesn't move, full of all those toxins, and you get inflammation. And that irritates the nerves that sit around that, what they call the extracellular matrix outside of the cell, the support structure. And you bombard what they call nociceptors. And nociceptors are free nerve endings that sit everywhere. And they take in these signals and they send it to the brain. And then the brain can interpret all those signals as pain, as a pain response. Mm -hmm. And you can have them from all over the body that's just coming on in. And then it hits a, a threshold where all of a sudden you get pain today and you didn't have it yesterday. You're like, I don't understand why I was great yesterday. And now I woke up and I can't move. Well, because your fist tank finally gave way, mm -hmm. right? So that's stasis. We need to get we need to get in there and get it moving. So one of the ways that you can tell if you might have a lymphatic system issue is one, you have a lot of the symptoms that don't seem to be getting better. Your blood work shows it's normal and nobody can find anything and you still can't get out of bed. That's a big one. That is probably it. Uh, skin shows a lot of uh, lymphatic system issues. So skin health, because here's an interesting fact. Most of your lymphatics are located in three places. One is the gut. So that tells you a lot. Number two is the skin. Mm. So when the lymphatic system doesn't work well, or you have other detoxification organs in the body that might not work well because they're getting overloaded, i.e. like the liver. And here's a cool thing. The liver produces 50% of the lymph in the body. What? Yes. So that's kind of cool. So if they don't work well, the toxins got to get out somehow. Well, your skin says, hey, guess what, guys? I'll do it for you. And then I'm going to bleed out all the toxins. Then your skin gets thrown under the bus. Yeah. Right. And it looks that way. And it can be anywhere in the body. And the next place you have it, you have about 600 to 700 lymph nodes in the body. One third of that number is from the neck up. I'm going to say that again. Because that's a big take that's, home moment here. Yeah. One third of 600 to 700 is from the neck up. So what does that tell me if I step back and I think about that logically? That the, your body thinks that stuff in the head and the neck is super important. <laughs> so everybody in my world gets lymphatic work from the collarbone up, no matter what you got. Like, I don't, I don't care. Doc, my pinky toe hurts. Okay, great. I'm going to take a look at your pinky toe and then we're going to do head and neck lymph, right? And then we're going to go down to your pinky toe. Because why, why would it do that? Because it's got to drain the most precious thing that you got, right? right. The brain. The brain. It's got to come down there and got to get out somehow. And so that's huge. So the skin is, is a big one. And then I actually uh, do what's called an awareness exam. I call it an awareness exam because I use my hands and I press on areas of the body where you have uh, big clusters of lymph nodes. And those lymph nodes gather in kind of communities and groups. Mm -hmm. And then I, I look and see if I press on them, do you want to punch me in the face because it hurts? And because it's not supposed to hurt when I put my fingers in there. If it does, I already know what you got inflammation. And if you yeah. got inflammation, you have a lymph problem. 
So it's like a domino effect, bing, 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 bing. So I watch your response to my touch and I watch what happens to the skin when I touch there. Does it turn red? Does it turn blotchy? Does it get inflamed? That kind of stuff. Okay? And I see, do you show me a fight or flight response when I come near an area of your body because your nervous system is freaking out because there's some kind of vulnerability there? Because it knows there's some of that underlying inflammation around all those nociceptors, those nerve centers that we sent before that's there. And they say, oh, no, Dr. Perry's coming close. This is not going to be pretty, right? Yep. And here's the cool thing about those clusters, because you see, I'm getting excited now, right? So here I go. Two things move lymphatics primarily. Movement. Movement moves lymph. And then here's when people say, what kind of movement? And here's my answer. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Even I knew that. Yes, I followed you long enough. Well, all of it, right? All movement moves lymph. Okay? But the problem is that people don't move a lot these days. They sit a lot. They're stagnant. And when they do move, they do the same kind of movements all the time which actually forms certain pathways that water flows in one way, but not another way, because you're not moving differently. You're not moving enough. So you have to get a variation and variability in what they call variety. My friend, Joanne Elphinstone calls them the three V's. Just do things differently, move differently than you're doing now. And then the other one is breathing. And then people say, what kind of breathing? Well, guess what? Here's the same answer. Yes. Right. But ideally, diaphragmatic breathing, breathing from the diaphragm muscle. Why? Because the diaphragm muscle increases pressure in the body and decreases pressure in the body. Increase, decrease, increase, decrease. What does that sound like? Sounds like a pump to a me. Pump. So it, it pumps fluids throughout the body, not just lymph. And it moves the organs up and down every time you breathe because you have what they call intra-abdominal pressure. The pressure around the belly gets higher. And then you move the organs like a piston. And holy cow, that's where most of the lymph lives. And the largest lymph node in the body lives a few inches above your navel at the same time. And then wouldn't you know it, that's where the vagus nerve goes. So I also move the organs and I stimulate the vagus nerve at the same time. Right? And then when I've worked the lymphatics in the neck, I help my vagus nerve because the largest lymph node in the neck sits right where the vagus nerve drops into your neck from your brain. That's kind of cool. So I actually clear the toxins around my vagus nerve. Here's what I want people to understand. Maybe one of the reasons you're not getting the progress you need from your vagus nerve work is because you're missing the lymphatic work first. Mm, that's huge. That's, that's really huge. So what we tell everybody is in our work, lymph work always comes first. Right? Lymph work always comes first. Then every, uh, everything else comes first. And people say, well, why is that? And I'm going to go back. I'm going to say, I don't know if it's one word or two words, fish tank, <laughs> fish tank, Bring your fish tank. I'm going to say, think about the fish tank, like all the systems of your body live in the tank. So you got to clean the tank first. If you, if you want any of those other systems to respond as well as they can from the therapies that you're doing. And maybe that's the reason that you hit the wall. Mm -hmm. Now, nature is really smart. The lymph node clusters, the toilets, they gather around the joints of the body that are supposed to move. That's the operative word, supposed to move the most. So let's think about some of the joints that are supposed to move a lot. Shoulder joints, one. So that's why people get clogged up in the shoulder and then they get all the stuff in the breast tissue and the axilla and the arm. And that's why they have to look there when you have breast cancer. Right. Right. That's a master site of drainage in the whole body. Which I don't think um, a lot of people know. I mean, people, some of us know, I, you know, but a lot of people are just shocked when they say, do you know how many lymph nodes you have in your armpit? They're like, what? Yeah, a lot. Exactly. And, you know, and then so and they get tight and compressed because we slouch all day. Mm -hmm. Our pectoral chest muscles are really, really tight. Right. We're looking down at a phone all the time. So we curl forward. We don't breathe well. We're really tight in the chest or you're wearing really tight clothing or bras or brassiers that can choke things off. So the shoulder joints one. How about the hip? The hip joint is another one. Right. Well, we sit all day and we choke it off. Mm -hmm. The back of the knee is another one. So when you sit all day, you flex your knee and you choke that off. 
Another one is the abdomen. You're supposed to move a lot in the center of your belly. That's called reaching over your head and twisting. But it's really hard to do that when you're looking at a phone. <laughs> yeah. Understand? And then the other one is actually at the top of the neck, right at the skull, mm. right there. It's called C1, C2. That's where the largest lymph node in the neck lives on the left side and on the right side. That's where most of the motion is supposed to happen in your whole neck and people don't move there. So wow. people are choked off at almost every single point that needs to have lymphatics, particularly the most important one, where the lymph drains. So all the lymph in the body drains to the collarbone region above and below it's called supra above and infra below the collarbone so it drains into the veins there it's called the subclavian vein sub means below clavian for clavicle and goes back into the heart if you're really really tight in that region then it backflows everywhere else because it can't get through mm -hmm. it'll be tight so, right now just right now people start to press press hard along yeah. their collarbone above and below their collarbone that's a huge, Whoa. that's a life changer. If you, that's one of the signs that we look for, which I didn't mention before, is that looking for puffiness above the collarbones. Right? Yeah. Uh, people that over breathe through using the neck and the traps and the shoulders because they don't breathe through the belly, they increase the tension in the connective tissue called fascia above the collarbone and you choke off the lymphatic flow. But guess what else you choke off? Blood flow to and from your brain is mm -hmm. what you choke off. Mm -hmm. So then I get a backflow of lymph and I get a backflow of toxins in the brain. And I don't get oxygen to the brain. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I, I can't function that well. Now that's really important for people to understand here too, is because listen, if you have poor oxygen flow to the brain and poor, poor toxic removal from the brain, you're going to get neuroinflammation, which can change your perception of pain. Right. Because they tell you that pain is in the brain. And I'm like, okay, that's true. But you better tell me what the environment my brain is living in because that's going to make a difference on how it interprets the signals coming into it. Yeah. So it's the same thing. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you, you better clear the fist tank first if you have any chance of helping to drain the brain. You can't just look at the brain. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that's my pet peeve a lot is that people still break things down into parts, even though they give lip service to the whole because mm -hmm. we say it, but I see it and we don't do it. We go body parts and then also not just body parts, but we isolate systems all the time. Yeah, because I love that people love lymph, but sometimes they just focus on lymph and I'm like, you can't do that because they all work together. So we have a saying, what we teach is that no system in the body ever works alone, never gets injured alone, never heals alone. It's all or nothing. There's no such thing as an isolated injury in the body. There's no such thing as isolated healing. Everybody tries to help each other out. But these systems of fluid always work together. I'm going to throw a big fancy word, but I'm going to explain it because it's important for people to understand is that let's say that I'm talking about the lymph flow in my shoulder in that pec. That's the lymph system. Mm -hmm. But you also have a big cluster of nerves that sit there. And you also have a big cluster of blood flow going down and up. They call that neurolymphovascular bundles. That means nerves and lymph and blood flow clumped together. If you have a problem with one, you got a problem with it all. And you need to understand that all of those areas communicate with each other. They have a ton of different names that medicine gives them, but forget the names. They don't mean anything. They're all connected to each other. They all talk to each other. And when we teach fluid flow stuff, we tell people that big pipes turn into little pipes. And you have to go after big pipes first in order to help the little pipes. So that's why we do lymphatic system work first. And we teach people to focus on those six areas that I mentioned. It's called, if I have time, I'll, t I'll tell people about it. It's called the big six method. The big six method. Well, you know, everybody right now is poking on their collarbone. You know, they're poking on their pec muscle to see how sore and tight they are. Yeah. So, so here's the key. Wh what do we do about it now? This is Fix the key. Okay. Fluids move in the body based on pressure. Right. Okay. They, they function from high, high pressure to low pressure, which means that fluids always go from a high pressure towards a low pressure naturally. So think about uh, water behind a dam that's holding it up. If you open up the dam of the, the, 
door and then the water naturally goes from the high side to the lower side. Yeah. Okay? The lowest pressure for the veins in the body and the lowest pressure for the lymph in the body is at the collarbone. Oh. So everything wants to drain, wants to, that's the point, to the collarbone. Where is it drained from? Well, everywhere else. So then you say, if that's where the lowest pressure is, where would the highest pressure be in the body? At the furthest distance away from the collarbone. So the furthest distance away from the collarbone above the collarbone is your brain. Mm -hmm. So your brain wants to drain to the collarbone. Your fingers want to drain to the collarbone. Your feet want to drain to the collarbone. But guess what? They can't get there until they pass the big six first. Right. They have to pass the clusters. And many people have blocked clusters in all six. So why I'm telling you this is that when you release lymphatics, you never, ever, ever, ever start from the hands and the feet and work your way in. You start from the collarbone and you work your way out because well, you have to reduce flow from low to high, not high to low. Because what happens is you're going to be sending something from one block into another block that's further down the chain because you went the wrong way. That's really big for people to understand. Okay. So when you're, we're talking going, so like massage or dry skin brushing, you know, especially when we're focused on lymphatics, it's from the collarbone out, out, then you can go from out in, but you always initially start from inside out. Then you go outside in. Okay. Right? Cause some people say, what about massage? I'm like, yeah, you can get a massage, but you should be doing a massage after you release the big six first. Now remind everyone where the big six is, even though you said it earlier. I'm glad it that you asked because <laughs> you have to do it in this order. Oh, I'm going to write this dang down. Yeah. Go for You'll it. Never, ever, ever change the order. Okay. Cause it's just based on pressure. Oh, okay. So we start from low and we work out. So a spot number one is always at the collarbone. All right. We got that. So you go above and below the collarbone and you rub and you massage there and people say, which way? Yes. Every way you can think of <laughs> left, right, up, down, circles, figure eights, hieroglyphics. I don't care what you do. You just got to open it up. Just don't cause pain when you do it. All right. And very, people say how hard vary your pressure from light to a little bit deep, but don't cause pain. Right. So when you open that up now, all the other parts that are further away want to start draining. Because that's like opening up the drain in my tub that was stuck. Mm -hmm. right? Now we go to spot number two. Spot number two is at the top of the neck on the left and the right, right behind the angle of the jaw below the lobe of your ear in what they call cervical one, cervical two. That's where the largest lymph node in the neck lives and where your vagus nerve drops out of your brain right there. So you put your fingers right behind the angle of the jaw below your earlobe and mm -hmm. you rub right there. So now when I free that up, that's going to rush down towards the collarbone. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Now we go to the shoulder joint, the axilla, the armpit region. So what happens is you rub on that pectoral region, underneath the pectoral region, all over the front of that shoulder, even grab that muscle with your fingers and just kind of massage it like you're needing the pizza to pie you dough, like you're getting in there, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you do both sides. You always do both sides, right? Yep. And then that's spot number three. Now, spot number four is where you have most of your lymphatics at your abdomen. All right. So I'll tell people, I want you to put your hands on your abdomen and you massage the space above your navel and on your navel. You get in there and you massage it like left and right and circles and spirals and rotations. You should spend a lot more time on your abdomen than you do other places because it needs it. All right. The abdomen is so neglected in uh, healthcare and relationship to manual therapy, get, getting your hands in there. It's hardly, it's never touched in massage. It's hard, never touched in anything. People don't touch the belly anymore. I know. And, and they really should because mm -hmm. it's, it's a big missing link for a lot of things. The, I follow Eastern medicine a lot and you may too, that I learned from saying that if you massage your abdomen 20 minutes a day, you'll change your life. You'll change your life. But you better not massage it until you do one through three first. I was like, telling. we've learned. Okay, number five. Number five is the crease of the groin at the hip. Okay. 
the right where you would sit and you have the crease of the pants. Mm -hmm. You massage there. And that's huge because that's a big point for blood flow to the leg. That's where the blood flow to the leg comes from. Okay. And then the other one is behind the knees. That's spot number six. So you do one, two, three, four, five, six. Because why did I do that? Because I'm, re I'm releasing the big clusters of stagnation and pressure. So now the feet and the hands can pass through there. Mm -hmm. Then I can go back and I can brush from the feet up. I can brush from the hands up, right? Okay. Because I, I needed to open up the flow points, the choke points. Amazing. And what you're going to find is this, your results will be vastly different when you do that. Okay. Now, I want people to understand that if you brush from feet, hands first, it doesn't mean that your lymphatic system is going to explode and you're going to die. It's not that it's not that big of a deal, but it is a, that big of a deal because it's not optimal. Yeah. You're making it harder for your body and it's going to struggle when it shouldn't have to. Because it's like, it's like, great. I appreciate you rubbing the foot, but you do know you're blocked at the groin, right? Like you should clear there first. So when you rub all of those points, guess what you also influenced? Everything else in the whole body. Everything, the nerves, the big nerve trunks, the big artery trunks, the big vein trunks. So what I did was I opened up what I call the supply chain. Okay? So nutrients can actually get to stuff and then waste can get out. Because it's almost like the supply chain crisis that we had here in the United States where we had everything sitting offshore because like, dude, I can't get in. Mm -hmm. Like I'm here, but I can't get in. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what it's like when you have blockages in these regions, right? But here's another big takeaway. I want people to understand why I did that. When somebody has pain, I don't just arbitrarily start pushing on body parts because it feels good, right? Because... I need to open up all these flow points and then I'll go to where your pain is. Cause I'm going to contend. Maybe you got the pain cause you got these blocked flow points. And then I'm going to say to you, how do you even know these flow points don't hurt? Mm -hmm. Cause then I'm going to stick my fingers in there. <laughs> and most people are really painful in all six. I remember. Gonna, the, yeah. I remember yeah, the first time my chiropractor years, this is probably. I don't even know, 20 years ago, he stuck his finger in my clavicle, right, you know, above and below. And I was like, oh, I flew off the table. Ah! Yeah. He said, oh, yeah, we got to work on this. That's really important, doc, that I tell people that if you massage above and definitely under the collarbone, mm -hmm. there's a muscle under there called the subclavius. Sub means below clavius for clavicle. A muscle that sits under this very, very tight on a lot of people. When that gets tight, it chokes off flow to and from the brain. Uh, that's huge. Mm -hmm. And most people never look there because nobody says, doc, I got to come see you today. My collarbone's killing me. <laughs> they don't say that. It, 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 they hurt everywhere else. Mm -hmm. Right. But here's an important thing that I want people to realize is that when it comes to pain is that you weren't consciously aware that those areas were hurting until somebody no. stuck their finger there. Yeah. But here's what, here's what, here's, what, here's the big part. Your brain and your nervous system and your whole body has always known that it's been painful, but it knows it at a subconscious level. Mm -hmm. So it's having to deal with it all day long. So you don't have to, you understand? Yes. So it's adapting and compensating and stuff like that. So that's a lot of that kind of nociceptive, painful stimuli coming in under the radar. It's like, it hasn't crossed the radar yet to where you go, holy cow, I hurt. Mm -hmm. But those things add up, right? Those mm -hmm. things add up. And I'm going to stand by this until I'm dead. What I'm going to say is that you may have an area of your body that you're pointing to that really hurts. And we need to go there and focus there and treat there because one, you expect me to, and I'm showing empathy for you that I understand. But we also have to address all those other areas that you had pain as well. Because if you don't get those under control, the one that's lit up like a Christmas tree can't because you're always going to manifest pain in the most vulnerable part of your body. It can be physical vulnerability or it can be emotional, mental vulnerability that's there. 
And here's the dirty little secret. It's always both. Because you can't separate the mind and the body and the emotions from things like that. Of course. So what I want people to understand is that just start to focus on the lymphatics. If you get in there and you just rub and press and move those six things in that order, and then you jump up and down, then you do your rebounder, then you run, then you work out, then you exercise. I promise you, you're going to say to yourself, this is the craziest thing I've ever felt. Man, I can't believe how much of a difference that made. And all I did was rub those body parts because when you look at it, it seems silly, but it's only when you're looking at it from the outside and you you don't understand what you're rubbing mm -hmm. and why you're rubbing what you're rubbing and when you're rubbing what you're rubbing. You understand? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. ginormous, huge. It's like brain exploding, huge. Now, That's you know, the takeaway. You know, people are going to ask, well, Dr. Perry, how long do I rub it for? Right. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> then I tell people, yes, right. <laughs> Which means it's just the awareness that you actually need to do it. Mm -hmm. Did you need to rub it? Um, but just stay there as long as to, to what feels comfortable for you. Right. But you also have to remember one of the fundamental rules of um, any type of physical therapy or anything in life, more isn't better, better is better. Because mm -hmm. You know, people also need to understand this is that many people who have these symptoms and have all these things that show up, they have a system that's severely overwhelmed, very sensitive to any stimuli, even good stimuli. Yeah. It's very easy to push an overwhelmed system into being overwhelmed because you're doing too many good things, too fast, too much, too soon. So you have to back it off. That's why if you just start easy with the big six and give yourself a little time to um, notice the changes in there, which is a great time for me to mention something that's important. Whenever you work those regions, you're going to increase fluid flow in the body and you're going to increase how the inflammation and the waste is moving better. You need to get it out better out than in. Mm -hmm. But when that happens, you're probably going to feel initially a little crappy. <laughs> you might go through a little bit of a detoxification reaction because you're purging some of those toxins. And that's okay. And that's expected. If you do the big six like that, you typically will not get overwhelmed with too much on there. Mm -hmm. um, but that's also a, a great thing that ties back into a lot of the things that you've been covering on this root cause podcast. It's about ensuring that your other detoxification pathways can work well. Mm -hmm. okay. um, Cause you want to make sure that you are pooping, that you get waste out and that you have a, a nice functioning uh, liver <laughs> that works well. Yeah. But you're, you'll find that you're, that you're, when you start to get the lymphatics moving, you'll usually find that your liver detox works better. Makes sense. Yeah. At the same time, because the, the liver dumps its lymph into the largest lymph node in the body, which is the center of your abdomen. And if that's blocked, guess where it's got to go? Well, yeah. it's got to go back to the liver because it can't go anyplace else. So then the liver takes a hit, right? So you still uh, do those six flow points all the time. It's an easy daily reset to do. And then people say, should I do it in the morning or should I do it at night? There's no perfect time to do it. It's actually very individual. Mm -hmm. Some people love to do it in the morning when they wake up because one of the symptoms of a, a poorly functioning lymphatic system is a lot of full body tightness, tension, and uh, you're moving like the 10 man in the morning. You're like, oh my goodness, it's taking me so long to get moving because you're just stagnant, mm -hmm. right? And doing that big six in the morning, I mean, you're going to own the day. I mean, mentally and physically, you're going to be a monster, right? Some people like to do it at night because it prepares the lymph system for nighttime because you have a lot of time when you're not moving at night. And we know that the brain drains its toxins at night mm -hmm. when and if you sleep, right? But some people don't sleep at night after they do the big six because it was too much stimulation for they kind of got a little bit wired up and then i tell them just do it both ways and see which one you feel is most effective for you 
And I always give the big six out as a warm up before any physical exercise or physical movement. This is it, good. Prim it primes the blood flow. Yeah. So you do your big six and then you stretch. You do your big six and then you do your warm up. Okay. Because now you're getting everything lubricated, you're getting blood flow in. And when you rub those joints, you're increasing what they call proprioceptive awareness to the joint. So now your brain knows where your joints are so I can move better. And then, Wait, yeah. yeah. And then when you work out, when you work out, what do you create when you work out? Well, inflammation and waste. Because you're supposed to, because you mm -hmm. want to get rid of it and make new cells and become uh, you know, more of a monster. Well, then you do the big six after you train. Because now I can get rid of the metabolic waste so I can go back to what I do and love harder, faster, stronger, longer. And, and maybe it'll be the difference in my performance barrier. So I stand on the podium and I get gold and you get silver. It could very well be that. Yeah. So it's yeah. no joke. The big six. That's the big six method is powerful. And I want people to know, too, because I know I'm going to get asked this. Well, how many times a day can I can I do it twice a day? Can I do it three times a day? Yes, you can, yeah. but I tell people you have to earn the right to do that. Mm. How do you know you earn the right to do it? Well, you didn't get a detox. So one of the things that happens is if, if you get a detoxification reaction to something, that's good, but you need your body to also be able to recover from that detox before you send more at it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because I'm just going to overload the system and I'm not going to get better faster because I made myself feel crappier faster. It doesn't work like that. Because now your body has to deal with the stress of the detox. Mm -hmm. I have some people that like to do it uh, once a day. If you do it once a day and you're like, hey, you know what? I actually feel pretty good. Then you're going to say, I'm going to do it twice a day. Then if you do it twice a day and you don't feel so good, there's your answer. Yeah. yeah. And then you stay it once a day for a little while. And then you go back to twice a day and you're like, oh, you know, this is really, really great. I feel pretty good. So it just kind of goes by the uh, individual that you're working with in yeah. relationship to how often they do it. So there's no hard, fast rule because it's based on the individual. It's based on your stress level. It's based on a lot of different factors that might change. But once a day is an absolute must, in my opinion. And this is, this is a cumulative effect. I mean, it builds on each other, right? Mm -hmm. When you up, open at these flow points day after day after day after day, and you get the supply chain working of nutrients and oxygen to tissue and then waste out, well, your body is able to do what it's designed to do. Mm -hmm. so, That's shocker. The point. <laughs> yeah. So Let's do what it. Happens is it's just a matter. I'm, I'm just trying to ensure that the pathways are open for your body to do what it's designed to do. Because if they're not, I don't care what you do. It's not going to work. Yeah. And it's, it's just it, it, people feel terrible. Yeah. I mean, well, here's the thing too. You ain't going to find that on a blood test. You ain't going to find that on a yeah. scan. There's no way to look at the lymphatic system on something and be able to tell if it's dysfunctional, unless you have significant lymphedema, mm -hmm. but then I already know it's dysfunctional. You follow? You can see it. And here's the thing. If you have a, an autoimmune or a chronic pain or chronic disease and all this inflammation and lymph issues, I already know you struggle to detox. Yeah. So I know I have to go easier on you. It's really simple. When people come in to see me, I already know your lymph system's a mess because you stand in front of me asking me for help. Yeah. You don't get there until it's, a, it's an issue. It just depends on how much of an issue it is. And then once you be able to get it under control with these six steps that you can easily do on your own, mm -hmm. that's very empowering. But it's also the awareness. Tell me if somebody just gets that fish tank analogy and they see it and then I say, just do these six things um, and then you wait and see what happens. That's a really wonderful self-care program for people to do. And it really doesn't take long when I do it, which now I will start doing it every day instead of when I remember. Um, I mean, sometimes it's just, you know, 10 or 15, 10 seconds, 10, 15 seconds in each site, because that's all the time I have. And other times I can go a little longer. And I, when I, you know, we fo I follow you on social media, like I said, and, and you'll walk people through the big six on the, you know, rubbing and patting the, these different lymph clusters. And it doesn't take long. You know, I don't want people listening to this thinking, geez, it's like, I don't have an hour to do all this. 
Yeah, have that's to. one of the reasons why we created it because it, it doesn't have to, for effective things don't have to be complicated, right? No. And if you make it too complicated, they ain't going to do it. I mean, that's just, that's just human behavior. Yeah. But here's the thing I, I've, I've learned through what I do now is that it's not so much the techniques that mm. I teach people to do. It's a way of thinking. So if you know you need to do the big six and you need to do them in that order, you can use a lot of different techniques and tools to do it, which means maybe one day you want to just rub it. Mm -hmm. Maybe the next day you want to do some light tapping on it. Maybe one day you want to use some gua sha tools on it. Maybe one day you want to use a vibration ball on it. Mm -hmm. Those are tactics. What I don't want you to ever lose sight of is the strategy. Yeah. And the strategy is one, two, three, four, five, six, not six, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> right. That's, that's a completely different result that you're going to get. So don't be afraid to explore um, and, and feel comfortable doing those things. Just make sure you don't hurt yourself when you do it. Because when you put yourself in pain, when you're doing a therapy, you're going to put yourself in a fight or flight flea, flea response. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, your nervous system always falls back on old protective behaviors to, to protect you and you won't, you won't get out of the quicksand. You do that. Right. That makes sense. And we, especially doing this, we want you out of the quicksand and very fluid. We want the movement. Yes. It's all about the fluid flow. And once you understand how fluids move in the body, you'll never look at the body the same way again. And you'll understand what your body's trying to do in relationship to the healing process. Yeah. Because if you don't have fluid flow, Stuff isn't getting anywhere. Mm -hmm. I don't care what kind of technique you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I talk about that all the time. And like again, hormones is my thing, so I'm always talking about the ovaries. On the ovaries, the cells that make your for females that make testosterone, which is the very first step for hormone production to make then estrogen and subsequently then progesterone, are called the theca cells. They're on the outside of the follicle. They are where the lymph and the blood flow come to, they're the first line defense. Mm -hmm. They're the outer barrier to, to cells. Mm -hmm. And so in my teaching, I always say that if you have really tight constricted abdominal area, if you've had surgery for whatever reason, endometriosis, if you blood flow issues, lymphatic issues, how do you expect those theca cells to get any of the nutrients, oxygen, anything in there to make your hormones in the first place? Everyone's looking for an herb and I'm like, but they can't even make the hormone in the first place, because just in that example, the ovaries can't get the nutrients, the oxygen, et cetera, et cetera. And then on the up flip side, they can't get the toxins out. They can't get out of their waste. So let's start, let's start with air. But yeah. it, what you we're talking, and that's what I, you know, hormones are my thing. So I'm focused, I'm hyper focused down there in the ovaries, but it's the whole body. You're trying to oh. heal in your shoulder, but if you can't get nutrients, oxygen, et cetera, in and waste out of the shoulder region, you're going to have shoulder issues for a long time. Oh, I, oh, oh, hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, cause the lymphatic system also transports hormones. Mm -hmm. right? and, mm -hmm. and so when we try to uh, teach people this thinking process for, you know, helping where something hurts, I just have them think of the flow we mentioned, Yeah, you know, and then I just say, okay, well, if you've got the inflammation around your abdomen and your ovaries, where does all that waste got to go? And you should be pointing to your collarbone. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to say, okay, well, clear the route. What's the, what's the block that's immediately above the ovaries while well, your abdomen? Mm -hmm. You better clear that or it's not going anywhere. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, well, if you're trying to heal the ovaries, where's that blood coming from? Well, you better be pointing up higher to the same place. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be coming from your heart. Yeah. And it's got to go down the same way. It's just going in a different pipe. Mm -hmm. So that's why we say if you if you can do the big six and then honestly spend uh, about 15 or 20 minutes of your day massaging your abdomen, you will notice some astounding results in how everything feels. I promise you that. Yeah, I believe it. I 100% believe it. Absolutely. Ah, oh, Dr. Perry, this has been amazing. I know. Yeah, sorry. Get, we I, went, I know we went a little bit over. I got we caught in the to. matrix, in we, the vortex. 
and the uh, extracellular matrix. We needed to yeah. though. This was this is great information. And like like I said uh, off camera, I'm big fan of practical and tactical. What people can do at home to take care of their own health. And you nailed it. So for those who are like, who is this guy? How can I learn more? Where can they follow you, find you, your courses and classes, see you? Tell us all the things. Well, first of all, I want to thank you so much for the time and the opportunity to come on to share what I what I love so much. Um, and it's and for your listeners for tuning on it. I'm really easy to find. Uh, <laughs> you just you just type in "stop chasing pain" on any search engine, and I'm going to pop up somewhere. <laughs> um, my website, stopchasingpain.com, is like the central hub for everything. And we're kind of on everything, uh, all the social media. At this point, I think maybe I spent an unhealthy amount of time on Instagram, but I digress. Uh, <laughs> I learned just, a lot. I have so many of your videos saved. Oh, thank you very much. I, that's my favorite platform for uh, sharing information. And they can see all of our uh, self-help uh, courses and videos and stuff like that that we have there. Because people ask me all the time, you know, I'm not a healthcare professional. Can I take your course? I'm like, yes, my course is designed for human beings to have self-care and take care of themselves. So anyone can tune in and learn from it. No problem at all. We'd love to see you there. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much again. I really appreciate it being on the Root Cause Medicine podcast.